So with that, uh, we'll pass it over to Margaret from Clean Water Services to discuss how they have tamed the riparian planting logistics and done amazing work with the system. Yeah, thanks, Brian, and hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm Margaret Wagner from Clean Water Services. We are a water resources management utility that improves uh, water quality in the Tualatin River Basin. Um, my department primarily focuses on the piece of that that uh, implements streamside riparian and wetland restoration projects to improve the health of the Tualatin River, which involves a lot of plant material and a lot of plant material management. Uh, can you get the next slide, Damon? So um, we have a, a really general uh, need to track uh, as Brian was saying, activities, management activities, and materials that go to sites. Uh, we have a lot of internal GIS um, and mapping data that gets stored and talks to other um, sort of other databases internally. Uh, and we generate a lot of data in the, the real-time day-to-day aspect of workflow um, that we weren't capturing live before. So we had a general desire to have more of this data track as we were implementing and more of it available and accessible for planning. Uh, not just plants, all site activities, but we started with a focus on the plant material. That is a picture of our cooler in the winter and just a bunch of plants, berry plants and bags. Uh, next slide, Damon. So yeah, we started, started with a focus on the plant material. Um, partly because it's a core aspect of almost every project that we implement in the watershed management department here. It, it touches all the project managers at some point. Uh, it was also a workflow pain point. So having all of the data going through um, a couple material managers during a busy season when you're moving a lot of plants around. Um, our previous system involved paper, email, Excel, and a budget tracking software, which was Oracle. Um, there were a lot of times when data had to be re-entered, you know, copied, pasted, or copied over from PDFs and paper forms, and then copied into other systems. Um, it created a lag, error-prone issues with copies and pastes. If different people were managing different pieces, you didn't always necessarily know whose you know, court the, the information ball was in. Um, so it touched a lot of project managers, a lot of projects, and it was a workflow pain point. It was also a way for us to sort of cut our teeth on the TerraMet TerraTrack system uh, with one initial module, uh, and then and then branch out after that into the rest of the management activities that we also spatially track the sites. I think there's is there one more slide? Oh yeah, there we go. So we started the first year uh, rollout with the plant material management module was not this past winter, but the one before. Um, so the winter from 14 to 15, um, which is our prime planting season. Um, I don't know if everybody is tuned in from the Pacific Northwest, but, but that fall to spring planting season. And we had a departmental um, and sort of partner goal to plant a million plants in that planting season. Um, that's across uh, containers, buried and plugs and, and all stock types. You can see there a screenshot of our um, outdoor nursery facility with a bunch of plug and container material. But it was a pretty, um, you know, lofty goal or it was a little bit of a stretch for us. It involved many project managers and multiple partners, other agencies, cities and nonprofits. So we were trying to both, you know, roll out this module and test it in a, in a pretty busy year, which was a, which was a good test for us to see its capabilities and it was a certainly a year where we appreciated uh, workflow smoothing and help because it was, a, it was a hectic planting season. We actually exceeded our goal. Um, we planted almost, actually I think we did crack 2 million. We put 1.9 million plants through the system, but then when we um, communicated with the rest of our partners through a program called Tree for All out here, we ended up um, cracking 2 million plants that year, which was pretty cool, especially for the first year with the system. Next slide. Hey, Margaret. Oh, yeah. Mark, mm -hmm. Could I jump in? Just for one yeah, second. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just mention that, as you're about to say, Metro is a, also using this system and they added the stock type of seeds. So they're, they're tracking their seeds through this. Uh, and then additionally, they're yeah. now um, keeping track of the province of where the plant material came from, um, as well as the they have the option of tracking um, container size or grade of material. They don't use that part of it too much, though. Just a few yeah, additions. 
Yeah, that's a really good point, especially considering that was something nice where since um, one of our major partners, Metro, since they're also using the system, if they build out a function like that, the, the ability to track seed and things like that, we have the option of using it too. So actually we're having an internal discussion right now about us starting to track seed in the system and the fact that all those pieces are there and we can sort of customize how we use it and what pieces we use um, is it, really cool. Yeah, that's a good point, Steve. Thanks. Um, okay, so then, yes, this, this past planting season was year two. Um, continued to improve and refine and, you know, add things, communicate with Metro um, about what they were adding and how they were using it. Um, we spent a little, more, a little bit more time developing trainings and best management practices for staff. We're working on a um, sort of a, a training module in case the material manager switches over in case it's not always me or the couple other people who are doing this. Um, we recently, we meaning uh, SICA in, in a partnership, added the, the financial information tracking that our agency needs to do, the budget planning and things that they referenced. So as you can see, um, on this slide down below, circled in red, there's just a couple places. It might be small depending on what screen you're on, but those are just circling areas on each material request where we can real-time capture budget codes that are associated with different sites. So once again, throughout the process, as soon as the individual project manager knows what, what budget code or task or, or bucket of money um, plans are supposed to be getting billed out of, they can attach that to the material request and it then tracks all the way through and then um, can be summarized and projected for our budget planning and, and managers. Um, and yeah, we exceeded planting targets again this past year and uh, it was good to be in the system. So we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of lead us into a walkthrough live demo of the actual system. But before I do that, really basically plants move through TerraTrack, uh, through the plant module, the way that they move through our, um, our physical space here, um, both our, our planting and then our nursery or cooler space. So we do growing agreements for them. We get them in through deliveries. Project managers request them, they get allocated and divvied up you know, electronically, virtually first, and then they get split up and they go out to sites and get planted. And for each step through the process of what we actually do, the workflow, the day-to-day, -day, there's a way to real-time track um, and actually help facilitate that process with TerraTrack so that it's making the process more smooth for material managers using it and also tracking the data at the same time. Uh, so you don't have a leg or a separate data entry step, and you've got real-time feedback and information for making decisions. So, yeah. I think, oh yeah, we've got the, sorry, I forgot about the, um, the cartoon here. So one more, just kind of visually represented um, what TerraTrack does. So we've got plants in a nursery where we're communicating with a grower. We enter a growing agreement or a communication with the grower or a plan into TerraTrack. Um, while those plants are still at the nursery, but we know what's coming will let us plan ahead. We do multi-year growing agreements, uh, which some people do, so you can sort of enter things ahead of time. And then there's a material order process where material managers enter what we expect to be coming from the growers and then can enter updates to that real time. And then you get a delivery from the grower, and then the same way those plants physically move to the cooler, they transition in TerraTrack to a different status which can then be you know, real-time um, queried and it will populate the inventory as we're moving along. And then there's the next step where the project managers submit a material request, um, which material managers will juggle based on you know, all the other requests coming in and what plants we actually have at the cooler and so on and so forth. Plants go out to site. Once again, there's a physical transition and there's a transition in TerraTrack um, so that we always know where things are.